Today I'll be taking the shortest scheduled passenger flight in the world. This flight is scheduled for just a minute and a half, but it often only takes about a minute. It connects two islands of Scotland's northern coast, Westray and Papa Westray. I've been travelling Scotland over the last few months and when I heard about this flight I was very intrigued. Why does such a short flight exist and what is it like? Let's find out. It's the night before the flight. I'm a little bit worried that the flight might be cancelled tomorrow. The rain is really heavy. This is really unexpected. And there is thunder and lightning. What is this? There's no way the flight will be going if the weather's like this. of Westray and I've been exploring the Orkney Islands in the north of Scotland in my camper van over the last few days. Just over there is the Isle of Papa Westray and there's a flight between these two islands which has been recognised by the Guinness World Records as being the shortest scheduled flight in the world. I've booked a one-way ticket this morning at 9.52am departing from here, the Isle of Westray, over to the Isle of Papa Westray. The ticket cost me £17 and I booked it a few days ago and there were no return tickets available as it was already fully booked so I'll be taking the ferry back this afternoon. The weather looks absolutely fantastic this morning and the forecast looks good today too. We still have a few more hours to the flight so I hope it stays like this. Let's get going. I've arrived here at Westray Airport and I'm the only person here. It's 9am and my flight leaves at 9.52. So this is not like a regular airport where you have to check in hours and hours before. There's a sign on the outside of the building there that says all luggage must be checked in 10 minutes before. So perhaps that's when the check-in closes. So the flight between these two islands is run as a public essential service. So this is essential for the people living on these islands so that they can have transport links to get to other places. The Orkney Islands Council administers this route as well as other routes on different islands within the Orkney Islands. This flight's been running for a really long time. It started in 1967 and since then it's set the benchmark as being the shortest flight in the world. Different airlines can bid to try and win to be the provider of this route but Logan Air have always been the ones who've been winning those bids apparently. This is actually my first time flying with Logan Air. They're a Scottish airline based out of Glasgow Airport and they fly to many places in the Scottish Highlands and Islands as well as other places in England and Wales and when I was booking my flight I also saw that they have flights going to Norway and Denmark too. This will be the smallest plane that I've ever taken a flight on so I'm actually a little bit nervous to be honest. There apparently is the pilot seat and then also space for eight passengers on the plane. So What's the smallest plane that you have ever been on? Please let me know in the comments. So in my camper van, I have my bicycle and this bicycle folds up really small and actually consider, is considered as luggage on some airlines. I'm going to ask if I can bring the bicycle on the plane actually. What's the shortest flight time that has happened or flight that It was 56 seconds. Oh wow, okay. Skyfall. Skyfall? Ah, uh, the James Bond movie. Aye. Yeah. It's this one of these planes, it's not one of these planes, but it's the same plane that's sliding down the mountain. Wow. It's, it's a Britain, Northern Ireland at the time. So it's possible to bring the bike and the total luggage allowance is 15 kilos. So I was able to bring my small bag and also my bike on the plane. So that'll be really nice to have the bike over there. And then when I take the ferry back, I can cycle from the ferry back up here to the airport to collect my van again. I also asked about liquids and there's no issue bringing any liquids on the plane like at a regular airport. So there's no need to worry about that. The aircraft was arriving into Westray from Kirkwall and one of the staff at the airport pointed out the plane in the distance. The plane looked so small and landed on the short runway at the airport before driving up beside the airport building. There were already some passengers on the plane who'd got on at Kirkwall and were heading to Papa Westray as well. There were two of us getting on the plane at Westray. Hey, the plane is here. Time to get on the plane. Very exciting. Bit nervous. Would this be your full time job here working at the airport? No, no, no. Everybody has multiple jobs. Really? I, I, I. All right. Okay, because just a few hours a week, is it? I, yeah. How, how long is a shift? Like an hour? An hour. Yeah. All right. Oh, wow. Tw twice a day, is it? Or I, twice, twice a day. All oh, right. Well, it's an interesting job to do, though. It's not bad. Yeah, especially on a day like today. <laughs> Yes. 
This is so exciting but very scared at the same time. I'm going to time it on my phone as well. Flights between Westray Airport and Papa Westray Airport operate daily in both directions, except on Saturdays, when only flights from Westray to Papa Westray are available, and on Sundays, when only flights from Papa Westray to Westray are offered. The total distance covered by these flights is 1.7 miles or 2.7 kilometres, and these flights are always combined with flights to and from Kirkwall Airport, which is located 27 miles or 43 kilometres away. Before retiring in 2013, pilot Stuart Linklater achieved a huge milestone by completing the short journey over 12,000 times, surpassing all other pilots. He also holds the record for the shortest flight between these islands, completing the trip in just 53 seconds. Can you see the shadow of the plane in the distance there? That is so interesting, that's so cool. And coming into land, oh! I heard that locals are usually not taking the flight between these islands, but instead are travelling onto Kirkwall, Orkney's biggest town. That was so much fun. It's quite hot inside the plane. It's a very small space. The flight has become more popular with tourists in recent years. For this flight, Logan Air uses one of its two Britain Norman BN2B26 Islander airplanes. The Islander is an aircraft flown by a sole pilot and the passenger cabin has eight seats. I made it to the Isle of Papa Westray. Behind me here is the airport. The airport on this side is really similar to the airport on the Isle of Westray. Inside there's the toilet. There's also the small waiting room slash control centre. And then there's a bench outside and some maps on the outside of the building. Did you weigh the passengers with the scale? No, it depends on the way the plane's going to have most of the and the air conditions. I've got about six or seven hours here on the Isle of Papa Westray before my ferry back to the Isle of Westray today. And I've got my bike, which is going to be great for nipping around. Even though it's a small island, it is quite big to walk the whole island in only six or seven hours. This island has a few interesting places to see, so I'm looking forward to traveling around the island by bicycle. Up on the, on the northern side of the island, it's been around about a five minute walk from the airport. There is this bench and then this is the start of the walk around the north of the island. And there's also a bird watching hat, so I'm going to head up there and see if I can spot any birds. Something I really love about these Scottish islands is that I can just leave my bike there and I know it'll be fine. If that was somewhere else <laughs> in Edinburgh or Glasgow, I'm sure it'd be gone. what the island looks like and then you can see where I am at the moment in comparison to the island. Seabird numbers have been falling to critical levels in recent years and this place here as a seabird sanctuary um, is a great place for seabirds to breed and nest and have a safe place to come. They've been doing great work here to help preserve the life of seabirds. If you've ever wondered what houses used to look like in Scotland, this is a, a good example of a house. A long time ago, people in Scotland and in these islands as well used stone to build houses. So you'll find houses that look like this. This one looks like it's been a bit more modernised. It looks like some cement was used. Just near that, that house, there's this amazing beach and there's a seal. Oh, I can also see some seabirds. The pictures of the seabirds that were in that hut are on the beach. There's absolutely no one here. Wow, this beach is stunning. Oh, the water's so blue. Does anyone else want to just jump in when they see water this blue? No wonder the seals love swimming here. I would too if I was a seal.
I'm now heading to a spot which is one of the most popular things to see here on the Isle of Papa Westray. It's said to be the oldest preserved house in Europe. I'm interested to see what it's, what's actually here. Let's go and have a look. The Napa Power is an ancient Neolithic settlement. It is one of the oldest preserved stone houses in Northern Europe, dating back to around 3700 BC, making it over 5000 years old. The site consists of two well-preserved stone structures, often referred to as houses, although their exact function is not fully understood. The Orkney Islands have an incredible amount of history and fascinating structures like the Napa Power. If you're interested to know more, you can check out my Orkney travel video below where I visit many more of these interesting sites. Summer has finally arrived here in Scotland in September and this is the Bothy Museum here. So cool, there's so many interesting things. St Boniface Kirk is the only church in Orkney, apart from the St Magnus Cathedral in Kirkwall, to survive the Reformation and remain in use in the present day. The church was abandoned in 1929, but was restored in 1993 and is regularly used for services. The community shop is amazing. The prices are really similar to what you'd find on main, the mainland of Scotland. And also there was a huge variety of different things and frozen goods, fresh vegetables, baked goods, lots of souvenirs from uh, the Isle of Papa Westray too. If you come to this island, definitely check out the community shop. I have made it down to the south of the island. I cycled from the community shop all the way down here to the south, which is where the ferry terminal is and also this really stunning beach. So my ferry leaves in about 30 minutes. I'm just going to slowly make my way over to the ferry terminal, admire all the lovely views here on the Isle of Papa Westray before I have to leave and head back to the Isle of Westray. Uh, quite a long cycle back. Finished the hilly part, so now for the downhill, almost back. I made it back to Westry Airport and my camper van. Wow, full circle from here to Papa Westry on the ferry back and cycling. That was a bit of a tough journey back. It was quite hilly and that folding bicycle isn't great on hills, but today was so much fun. I really enjoyed taking the shortest flight in the world and really enjoyed spending the day on the Isle of Papa Westry as well. I've made it back to the Orkney mainland and I'm at Kirkwall Airport. And this is where you can pick up your certificate for taking the shortest scheduled flight in the world. I'm going to head in now and pick up my certificate. Okay, lovely, thank you very much. I will uh, give you an envelope if you like, just to keep it protected for the rest of your travels. Oh, thank you, yes, the rain might damage it. Lovely. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thanks, thanks. Have a good day. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you for watching today's video. I've shared lots of photos from my time on Orkney over on Instagram, as well as suggested itineraries and my tips for traveling these amazing islands. If you're interested in seeing more videos about Scotland, please subscribe to the channel here on YouTube.